Hello, thank you for stopping by today. This ministry is here to bring the transforming Word of God with power to you. Many today have questions like, who is this Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ relevant to my life today? What does it mean to be born again? Is the Bible even real, true, and practical? Who is the Holy Spirit? How can I receive my healing miracles? Are healing and miracles even for us today? By the help of the Holy Spirit, Bishop Adolaju will be answering these and many other questions as he teaches the Word of God. Get ready to be inspired, fed, encouraged, healed, and blessed. And now, here's Bishop for today's message. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're listening to this. I'm so excited to bring another life-changing message of the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Before we start, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we turn to you. Holy Spirit, we invite you to speak to us, to minister life to everyone that will hear this word. Lord, I pray that life will emanate from your word because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. You are the living word of God. Lord, as we go through your word this day, let there be deliverance, let there be salvation, let there be healing, let there be miracles, let there be transformation in the lives of everyone that will hear this word in the name of Jesus. At the end of the day, Lord, let us come up higher to the level that you desire for us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. I'm so excited to, to be with you today once again. I'm bringing you another life-changing word of the living God. We have been covering the subject of prison break for the last several weeks. And the last message, if you've been kind of following with us, we focused our attention on prison break in the context of salvation. The best and the most important prison break that the Lord Jesus offered to everyone is prison break from sin. Glory to God. If you are not born again, I welcome you today to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to welcome him into your heart. That is the number one break or prison break that the Lord has for you. Today, we are going to focus our attention on something that I believe God has laid in my heart, which is in John chapter 5. John chapter 5, and it's a very, very familiar story in the scripture. John chapter 5, and it was chapter 5. We find a very, very interesting story of this man that the Bible introduced to us that has been in this situation for 38 years. Let's dive into it. You know, the Bible says the reading of the Word of God brings light, brings resolution, brings solution. Because as you hear the Word of God, faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Let's go. John chapter 5 verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Glory to God. Verse 2. Now there was in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pole, which is called in Hebrews Bethesda, or Bethesda, having five porches. So picture this. There are five porches in this pole. Um, and in verse 3. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. If you, don't, if you stop reading there, the first question that comes to your mind is, why is all these people gathered there? That's not the hospital. You expect them to go to the hospital or go to the clinic to get the help they need. But something must be happening here. And we find that in the next couple of verses. The Bible says in verse 4, For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stared up the water. Wait a minute, how did they know it was an angel? You know, that's a subject for another day. But the Bible says here, and you know, you can trust the scripture. All scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it's for rebuke, for correction, for doctrine that the man of God may be strong and established. So the scripture is saying here, for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. So if you jump in first, it's first come, first serve. It's not number two. It's not number three. And I was, you know, I was meditating on this uh, the last couple of hours before we do this recording, and God brought something to my attention. This is very, very similar to the rapture, the catching away of the church. You know, when that moment takes place, when the rapture takes place, when the trumpet sound, only those who are ready will be cut, will be cut off. 
only those who are re ready with their lamps trimmed like scripture said you know talking about the five virgins that are wise and the five virgins that are foolish only those who are ready will be caught away so if you are uh, uh, not a serious Christian you are not you are not taking care of your spiritual life this is a warning sign you know we see that here the scripture records that whosoever the first person that jumps in was healed of whatsoever he had whether it's cancer whether it's rheumatoid arthritis eye problem bone problem muscle problem generational curse it does not matter if you are the first person to jump in you are healed the Bible said in verse 5 now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years 38 long years that's that's a very very long time that's it if you born if you if somebody is 38 years old they are full-grown adults because in this country you are an adult at the age of 18 this guy had had this problem for 38 years and the assumption which is a very safe assumption that we can make here is been sitting at this place for that long the Bible did not say he was 38 years old. He's had the problem for 38 years. So at the minimum, he's 38 years old. Let's say he's had it from birth. Glory to God. But I want to believe that this, this man is older than 38 years old. But the one thing that we can say for, for a fact and for a truth, as recorded by scripture, is he's had this problem for 38 years. So the Bible did not tell us the schedule when the angel will come and stare at the water. You could stare in now and then five minutes later it does the staring again or ten years from now it does, does another one but from the fact that they are gathered there that means the frequency of the staring is very very uh, much more than between one and ten years you know it's more frequent than that maybe every day maybe every other day and there's no schedule to it so you have to be ready you have to be waiting you know, like the catching away moment when your miracle is coming to you, when, when the hand of God and the power of God is coming your way, I feel the power of God. When the anointing of God is coming your direction, you have to be ready to catch it. You have to be ready to receive like Elijah and Elisha. Elijah told Elisha, if you see me when I'm caught away, then you get that double portion of the anointing. But if you don't see me, too bad, you're not getting anything. So the, when, when that moment happened, Elisha said, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, more or less, I see you. So what we talked about must be re reality in my life. You said, if I see you, I'm getting a double portion. And if you look at the life and the ministry of Elisha, he had 16 notable miracles. The last one was when they threw a dead body into his sepulcher or his burial place. The man was revived. When you count the, mini, the, the miracles in his life, up until that point, he had 15. It looked like he didn't get double portion. Because in the ministry of Elijah, he had 8. In the ministry of Elijah, he had 15. But that moment when the dead body touched his body, boom, he came alive. Number 16. Double portion of the anointing. So we see here in verse 5. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 long years. I don't know how long your situation has been bugging you. I don't know how long you have had that problem. But I'm bringing you good news today. Today is your day of visitation. Today is your day of encounter with the living God. Today is your day of miracle. Today is your day of encounter with Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is here. He's here to do you good. He's here to set you free. For whom the Son of God is made free, he shall be free indeed. The Bible says in verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that you and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time he said to him do you want to be made whole again as I was meditating this morning I began to ponder on it you know the ministry of Jesus Christ the Lord Jesus Christ died at the age of 33 this man had had this problem at this point at the, for 38 years so let's just say for the sake of argument he had the problem from the day of birth so minimum is 38 years old so he's at least five years older than Jesus, assuming that this was the 33rd year of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the age of Jesus Christ would have been around 30 and 33. Glory to God. I want you to follow me. So the Bible said here, he, he knew by word of knowledge. This is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, that you will know something that has happened in the past or is happening in real time. The Bible says the Holy Ghost made it known to the Lord Jesus that he had had this problem for 38 years. And that's why we know 
because the man didn't he did jesus did not interview him like cnn hello mr so and so can you tell us your name what is your name what is the problem that you're having right now can you tell us how long you've had it no that did not happen he was revealed to him by the holy spirit through one of the nine gifts which is the gift of the word of knowledge glory to god the bible says when he saw jesus when jesus saw him rather lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time he said to him do you want to be made well and jesus is saying that to you today do you want to be made well and i want to believe your answer is yes i want to be made well set me free release me from every bondage and every impediment and every issue that my life has as encounter look at verse 7 and the sick man so in case you are wondering infirmity is just headache or some minor situation the bible said in verse 7 emphatically the sick man answered him sir i have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up well while i'm coming i'm making an effort lord i'm making an effort mister because he didn't know it was jesus because we are going to find out down in in a couple of verses that he didn't know it was jesus the Bible said, he said, sir, I have no man. When the water gets stirred and everybody sees it, somebody always get in before me. Maybe that's your situation. You always feel like you always get the short end of the stick. You never quite make it. You know, like somebody says, ah, we want to promote you, but you don't quite have enough experience. You don't quite have enough what we are looking for. I'm telling you, Jesus is about to make up that difference. Glory to God. He's about to make up that difference in your life. Glory to God. Jesus, this man said, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, I'm making an effort. I'm doing everything I can in my own power. I'm doing everything I can to encounter the supernatural. Because the angel of the Lord staring the water. <laughs> Glory to God. Did, 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 did people see the angels? We don't know that. The Bible didn't tell us. So we are not going to have to scripture. Did they just see the moving of the water? Because obviously when the water is moving, they can see the water moving. And they don't see anything. And all of a sudden, maybe some the first person, somebody joined, jumped in the water. Boom. He had cancer and he was cured. Or he was lame. All of a sudden, he started walking. And so all of a sudden, people started to con congregate. The word spread throughout town. That something is happening when the staring of the water takes place. And I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus is staring the water right now. Is the Kura Nataya is staring the water right now to bring about a miracle in your life to bring about a solution to the problem that you have faced the bible said in verse 7 the sick man answered him sir i have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up but while i'm coming another step up before me i'm telling you the holy ghost is coming alongside you right now to push you into the water to move you into the water to bring his anointing upon your life to bring the miracle walking power of god upon your life and jesus said to him uh, you don't need to wait for the staring of the water i am the word of god i'm the one staring the water i'm the one sending the angels to steer the water and i'm standing right in front of you and i'm telling you right now rise Take your bed and walk. And the Bible says immediately. Oh, I love that. Suddenly, immediately. I told you before, God is a God of immediately and God is a God of suddenly. The Bible said and immediately, verse 9. The man was made well, took up his bed and walked. There was no need for therapy. There was no waiting period. There was no need for medication. There was no need for take that drug, do this. No, 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 no. Because the living Savior is standing right here, right now. Now, issuing a word of command, rise, take your bed and walk. I prophesy to somebody that is watching this video right now, every breakthrough that you desire, receive it right now in Jesus' name. I speak to your blood. I speak to your bones. I speak to your muscle. I speak to you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. The power of God comes into your body right now and brings about a solution and brings about a miracle in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, in verse 8, and immediately the man was made well, took his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath, the Sabbath day. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, it is the Sabbath day, praise the Lord. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. And he answered them, 
they are not even concerned. They are not even intrigued by what just happened to him. They've seen him sitting there for 38 years. Leaders in the church, members of the church, people that are that are in the church, and they, they're saying it's the Sabbath day, and we are religious people. We need to follow the rules of the law. They don't really care what God has just done. That's what happened many times. People will see a notable, tangible miracle, and they are more concerned about about the rules and the regulation instead of praising the living God. The Bible said, it said, it's not lawful for you to carry your bed. And he answered them, he who made me well, he said to me, take up your bed and walk. It's not my fault. I'm not the one that did it. I'm not trying to break the rules. I'm not trying to break the rules of the Sabbath. This man said to me, take up your bed and walk. I just feel like speaking in Holy Ghost. Verse 12. Then they asked him, Who is the man? So that we can go and arrest him. Who is that man that has the effrontery, that has the boldness, that has the right to break the Sabbath? He said, Who is the man? They said to him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who he was, for Jesus had withdrawn. A multitude being in that place. Glory to God. Did you catch that? When Jesus was talking to him, he didn't even know it was Jesus. So there was no, you couldn't say that he connected to Jesus by faith. You couldn't say that he connected to his miracle by faith. Because he didn't even know it was Jesus that was talking to him. So how could he have connected? The Bible said here, then they asked him, Who is the man that said to you, take up your bed and walk? Verse 13. But the one who was ill did not know who he was. For Jesus had withdrawn. Remember, Jesus came to the feast. And you know when they have a feast in Jerusalem? Multitudes and multitudes and multitudes. And in this same place, the Bible said there were five porches full of people. Full of people. Full of people. And all of those people in the five porches, they are people with problems and people with situation in their family and in their life. Glory to God. They've been doing everything they can up until now, but nothing has worked. Look at verse 14. But the one, verse 14, afterward, Jesus found them in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. You know, that's a message by itself, but we are going to skip that. I want to just focus on what God put in my heart today. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill, to kill him because he had done this thing on the Sabbath day. Glory to God. It doesn't matter to the Lord Jesus whether it's Sabbath day, Holy day, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Every day is a day of miracle with the Lord Jesus. Because the word of God is standing next to you where you are. Because the word is coming through the airwaves into you right now. In John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. I'm sending the word of faith and the word of power into you right now. When you look at this man, he's been in this situation for 30 38 long years. Think about it. 38 long years. He's been battling this problem for 38 long years. Glory to God. So ask yourself today, how long has your situation been? 5 years, 10 years, 15 years? It doesn't matter because the living Savior is here right now to lose you and to set you free. From that situation. And that's what we find in this passage. The Bible said this man had been in that condition for 38 years. And he's tried. Because when Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? He said, sir, I have tried. <laughs> Every time that staring of the water, I try to jump in. <laughs> Maybe you've tried everything you know. You've gone to million evangelists. You've gone to miracles, meetings, after miracle meetings. And for some reason or the other, you are not connecting. I'm telling you, today is your day of miracle. Today is your day of miracle. Today is your day of healing. I feel the power of God. Today is your day of healing. I want you to connect with that power right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. When Jesus will break you out of that situation, right now you will be free indeed. And that's what we see in this passage. The Bible said, do you want to be made well? In verse 6, the latter part of verse 6, Jesus asked him, 
knowing that he had been in that condition for 38 long years. He said, do you want to be made well? And he said, sir, I have no man. Maybe you don't have any man. You don't have any helper. You don't have anyone that can help you. You don't have anyone that has been helping you. But Jesus is coming alongside of you to help you. The Bible says, the psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Glory to God. And he's here to help you today. He's here to set you free from every bondage that has held you down, that has held your family down. He's here to loose you in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray for you before we round up today. But I want to talk about a couple of things. When Jesus told them, rise, take your bed and walk in verse 8, the Bible said, and immediately, and immediately. Somebody say immediately, and immediately. The man was made well and took his bed and walked. What happened was when Jesus released the word, for he himself is the word. John 1.1, 1, 1, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. You probably can tell because I quote it quite a bit. Oh, he released the word. He said, rise, take up your bed and walk. The moment he issued that command, the power of God came and settled upon him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Every cell, every organ, every tissue reorganized. Come on now. Because it's the one that made it. <laughs> Remember, when you want to find out what's going on with your car, you take it to the dealership. Or you take it to somebody that is certified to un that understand how to fix that problem. But I'm telling you, the one that made you, the, the creator of the universe, the one that wrote this book, is the one that is standing right next to you right now. Because every time the word of God goes free, uh, goes loose, rather, the Bible says he, 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 he operates and he, he backs up his word. Confirming his word with power and with signs following. When the disciples went, they came back and said, Lord, Lord, they were rejoicing. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said, no, 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 don't be, don't be so freaked out about that. But be more excited that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. You'll be more excited that your name is in heaven. Lord, we are praying today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everyone that is under the sound of my voice, hearing the word of God come to them today. Lord, I'm asking, oh God, just like you did for the disciples, that you will back up your word today in the name of Jesus. So therefore, I speak to every situation, every situation in your body. Every situation in your mind, every situation in your finances, everything that has molested and harassed you up until now, every situation that has harassed your health, your health, maybe it's allergy. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. Every oppression of hell around your life, for whom the Son sets free, is free indeed. In Matthew 8 17, the Bible says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, that himself took our infirmity and bore our sicknesses. Oh, yeah, that here. Jesus already paid the price for that sickness in your body, for that situation around your family. He already paid the price. He already paid the price. So why are you carrying it? I want you to let it go. I want you to let it go. I want you to picture being at the cross, at the foot of the cross, and laying them down. Lay your burdens down. Lay your sickness down. Lay your diseases down. The Bible says he took the stripes on his backs. And the Bible says, 1 Peter 2.24, by whose stripes we were healed. 1 Peter 2.24 the latter part of that verse, by whose stripes ye were healed, past tense, ye were healed, is not going to happen, it's already happened, all you are doing is just receiving, all you are doing is just receiving, I want you to picture on Christmas day, somebody wrap up a present and they gave it to you, all you have to do is just receive it, you don't have to go to the store to go and buy it, you don't have to go to the store to go and pay for it, it's already been paid for, all you have to do is just receive it, receive it, receive it, so as we release the word of God and the prayer in a minute, I want you to just connect and loose your faith. Cut your faith loose and just say, Lord, I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive in the name of Jesus. Now, we've been talking about immediately and suddenly. We are going to be talking in the next couple of weeks by the grace of God about miracles that happened in the ministry of Jesus Christ that took a while, that took time. There was a period of time in between. Glory to God. I don't want you to get bogged down because that's one area that the enemy will come and defeat you. Say so it didn't happen immediately. The man said it's going to happen immediately and it did not happen. Then God is not going to do anything for you. Don't let him lie to you about that. Glory to God. There are many miracles that happened in the ministry of Jesus Christ that happened immediately. There are many miracles that happened over a period of time. Glory to God. 
I want you to come back. Come back. Come back to this channel. We are going to be, like I said before, we are going to be releasing the word of God with power and with authority. Because this word is alive. This word is alive and it brings about solution in people's life. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we have released your word. Now it's time for the miracles and the signs. So therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, everyone under the sound of my voice that is under any oppression, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Satan is the oppressor. Lord, you are the reliever. You are the deliverer. You are the helper. You are the one that sets free. So therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, everyone that is under any form of bondage, no matter how long, no matter where, whether it's in your mind, whether it's in your body, whether it's in your, in your pocketbook, in your family, I command in the name of the Lord Jesus that you are loosed in the name of Jesus. Every oppression of Satan around your life, you are set free in Jesus' name. You are loosed in Jesus' name. I release healing power. I release miracle power to come into your body right now in the name of Jesus. To come into your situation right now and effect a cure and a healing in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. We praise your name. King of kings, Lord of lords, we magnify you. I am that I am. We worship you. The miracle working God. You are the miracle working God. Your name is mighty. Your name is mighty. Your name is mighty. You are the miracle working God. Your name is mighty. Glory to God. I'm so excited because I know God has done a mighty, mighty miracle in your life. Don't let the enemy tell you otherwise. Like I told you, there are some miracles that happen immediately. There are some miracles that take a period of time. Just get hooked up. Stay hooked up with your faith. Because when you do, you are going to get your miracle. I want to encourage you. If this message has been a blessing to you, I want you to come back. I want you to tell your friend, tell your pastor, tell your colleagues, those who need a miracle, tell them to hear this message. Because I know God is doing something amazing in the lives of people and we are hearing testimonies. And as you do, the Lord God will bless you. I want you to come back again, subscribe to our channel, be a part of what God is doing here. And also, like I said in the last uh, series that I did, that this ministry is also open to invitation to other churches, to ministry, to conventions, to be a part of what God is doing. And I know God is opening new doors in the name of Jesus. For those of you that you have been shut down, you have been shut down, you have been shut down for so long, maybe in your job, maybe moving forward in life, I pray in the name of Jesus, the doors are open to you right now now in Jesus name. Father God, we thank you because you have done it. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being with us for today's broadcast. We believe this message has been a blessing to you. Don't forget to visit our website, BICConline.org. For more resources like books, videos, blogs, free gospel tracks, and more. We also invite you to subscribe to our social media feeds to get up-to-date messages, blogs, and upcoming event information from this ministry. Until our next broadcast, remember, God loves you with an everlasting love. Jesus is Lord, and He is your healer.